And I'm Paula Lynch, Executive Director, Arts Council for Monterey County. And in our next segment, we're talking with Eric Mora of National Steinbeck Center. Pretty much everybody, I'm quite sure, has heard of John Steinbeck, and we know that there's a tremendous legacy. So what we'll be exploring today is um, even more about what the National Steinbeck Center is doing and what, uh, how they're uh, conveying that legacy and what it really means to, to our youth today and how they're going to be moving forward with wonderful programs like The Big Lead. So Eric, thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here. So one of the things I'm always so curious about, you have so many places you could be, you mm -hmm. could have chosen to be anywhere. Um, why Salinas, why the Steinbeck Center, why are you putting your heart and soul into this? Well, I was born and raised in Salinas, and um, I went to study um, for my undergraduate studies in upstate New York, and I grew a little homesick after oh. after four years away. <laughs> so I, I moved back, and um, I was I was working um, already, and then um, I just found that a, a kind of really drastic life shift from being really busy with school to suddenly just working nine to five. Uh -huh. um, and I wanted to get uh, more involved with, with other organizations in my community, so I began to volunteer at the Steinbeck Center um, as, a, as a greeter. And from there, I, I, I grew more involved and so forth, and the position opened up, and I applied, and um, I And that's I began a perfect advertisement for people who are willing to volunteer, that it can turn into something yeah, no. even greater. Especially for young graduates who are not necessarily sure what they want to do with mm -hmm. their, their lives. It's um, a great opportunity to meet more people. It's a great opportunity to try um, different um, different act activities that perhaps you, you knew you, you could do, or. Um, or might be interested in doing but haven't had an opportunity to explore it in depth. Well, let's explore some more about John Steinbeck himself. And um, can you share with us a little bit about his life and um, the kinds of things that you're really interested in at, at the center, that mm -hmm. what somebody might see if, as they go through mm -hmm. uh, your exhibit? Yeah, so um, I was really interested when you, when you uh, to talk about John Steinbeck on this show in particular, just because it seems like, you know, when we're talking about our shared uh, heritage, our, our shared cultural um, heritage, the first thing that comes to mind is John Steinbeck. And you can see his um, mark on the, the county, you know, from, from the various um, landmarks that are devoted to him. You, you have um, Salinas. Definitely. Can you hold on one second? Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some images that show John Steinbeck and some of those, uh, those impacts that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so as we can, we see a couple of the images that that we have, and there is John, and um, so and many connections to. Yeah, to obviously, there. Salinas is is perhaps best known for for lettuce, or at least growing up in Salinas, I, I always knew it as an agricultural mm -hmm. city. But what was really interesting was going to to to, to school in upstate New York, and. Um, I always assumed that people wouldn't know where Salinas was, so <laughs> I would always describe it in relation to larger cities. Like uh -huh. it is two hours south of San Francisco, right. um, and so forth. But what was really interesting was meeting all these people who um, were already familiar with Salinas and Monterey County as a whole through Steinbeck's books. They were like, "Oh yeah, that's where East of Eden takes place." And so you have that's the Steinbeck so House, for example, um, one of the most recognizable Vic Victorian homes mm -hmm. uh, in the area, uh, and then it operates as a restaurant. You have murals throughout the the city of Salinas mm -hmm. commemorating Steinbeck's many achievements, and so even even on a very personal level, when I was growing up in Salinas, I was obviously aware of Steinbeck's influence on some very superficial yeah. level. Right, I knew there was a Steinbeck Plaza that yeah. <laughs> um, housed Steinbeck, business, Steinbeck, yeah, Steinbeck. <laughs> a Steinbeck House, a Steinbeck Library, yeah. for example. Um, and we are certainly, and as I've grown older, right, and, and have began working at the Steinbeck Center, uh, my appreciation for his legacy has has uh, furthered. Um, and uh, most recently, we we uh, um, unveiled a, a Steinbeck uh, Highway sign that mm -hmm. uh, basically it was Assembly Member Lisa Lejo passed this uh, legislation in order to um, rename the, the section of 101 that passes through Salinas as the John Steinbeck Highway. So again, we have a very clear, um, a very clear uh, influence by Steinbeck yeah. throughout the county. And of course, our, the, you know, my organization, the National Steinbeck Center, is probably the, the emblem of that, right? <laughs> that we build a museum um, and, devoted and to. And can him. we can we pause here for just a minute? And mm -hmm. can you talk us through? The way the exhibit, oh, I think one of the things I love the most is that um, the person going through really becomes immersed in all the things that influenced him over mm -hmm. time. Can you talk about how people have really benefited from walking through 
and, and seeing all those connections, the connections that Steinbeck himself had made to history and to culture long past and things like that. Yeah, the, the exhibit is, is centered thematically around his major work. So it actually begins with um, his upbringing in Salinas and some mm -hmm. wonderful quotes that he had about the books that he read in, in high school, about um, being introduced to um, King Arthur uh -huh. through his, through his uh, aunt and um, his own experience growing up in Salinas. And, and obviously the, what was uh, probably most influential in his life was place. So Monterey County, Sal the Salinas Valley, uh, land and sea. Um, and so as people go through the exhibit, they have a chance to see um, uh, first his upbringing, then his major works, and the themes that he explored. Um, and that always, uh, we hear uh, a variety of, of uh, things from, from visitors. Um, for example, they often note that um, they were familiar with perhaps one book, The Grapes of Bath, is usually yeah. the one that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, and they, they're left um, with a larger impression of, of uh, his entire literary canon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't Which that is wonderful? wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And, and even the movies that have been made mm -hmm. and, and different things. And even the friends that he had and that they're influenced back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's really, really exquisite. So let's talk also about um, uh, the, the, you talked about the land and the sea mm -hmm. influence and, and how that really affected uh, what he was writing about, what mm -hmm. he cared about. Um, and I think we have a couple of images on that too, uh, about the, the sea, the land and the sea. Um, so as we, as we get to those, um, can you explore that a little bit for us? And, uh, the, you know, so this is actually a photo that I took. Um, oh, you did? At, <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> on my phone um, oh, at uh, Toro Park. And it's very easy to see why he was so influenced and moved by yes. the Salinas Valley, right? Yes. It, it's quite visually stunning. It is. Um, that's actually looking down on the Salinas Valley. Um, and the, the next photo is taken in at uh, Pacific Grove. Um, and so it's quite easy to understand his his um, preoccupation with with landscape and nature. Yes. But what was I think what is uh, often less highlighted is his um, his uh, influence by others by collaboration, right? Um, and and I think that's partially by by the nature of of being an author. Do you think of writing as a, something that we do in solitude? Yes, do you yes, think of right. reading as something that we do in yes. solitude? But um, like I mentioned before, part of the museum begins with. Um, uh, paying an homage to his upbringing in Salinas. He talks about, you know, the influence that his mother as a teacher had yeah. on his life. And so you have, you know, um, all these influences by others, by the books that they gave him, by the books that he was exposed to. Um, all of that shaped his his vision. Um, and that's one of the, the things that we're trying to highlight as well as as a as his namesake museum. And um, one of the, the um, greatest opportunities for us to do that has been through the um, the NEA Big Read, the National Endowment for the Arts program uh, that, that encourages communities to come together and read a book. And I, I hate to speculate about... And they're about reading not just a book, but one. They're all reading the same thing, They're all right? reading the same book, right. Um, and I hate to speculate, you know, about what he would think about different things because you could you could spend, you know, an entire lifetime doing that. But I would <laughs> like to think that he would be so proud of this particular yes. program and that it, it, it just embodies so much of what he stood for. Um, so last year we, we were awarded an NEA Big Read grant to host a community read in Monterey County around Sunstone and Shadows, 20 Great Mexican Short Stories. Oh yes, I remember that. It was yeah. beautiful. It was wonderful. And, and we had such a great time with... Um, and we actually have some photos of that too. Can we show the... Um, the 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 next two images that we have because that's isn't that from the yes, that from big the read from last, last year, year. Uh, and I remember being really blown away by how you incorporated um, so so well, let's be for that though. so um, well what I remember is that you had these really great uh, visual um, exhibitions mm -hmm. and you brought in the the painters and they're they're just doing all kinds of wonderful things yeah it was wonderful so we we um, selected Sunset and Shadows twenty great Mexican sto short stories because of its emphasis on Mexican culture um, a lot of people think of, of Steinbeck as the quintessential American author Californian author yes, in particular right, but yeah, he had this right. long interest in international issues and mm -hmm, in particular mm -hmm. Uh, fascination with Mexican culture. I think about a third of his books either feature um, Mexican characters or Mexican culture in one way or another. Um, and so we, we wanted to, to pay um, honor to that as well, to that to that side of his legacy as well. And then obviously there's a lot of um, Latinos in Monterey County, and so we thought that would be an interesting um, all, all of these uh, interesting connections could, could come together under this program. And so what we did was um, 
we also use it as an opportunity to um, uh, explore other other um, artistic expressions. So, for example, like you mentioned, we had um, Hijos del Sol, which is a wonderful mm -hmm. nonprofit that uh, we've partnered with on many occasions. Yeah. Um, we had their students read the book, and then they interpreted them as paintings. And then we exhibited those paintings as part of the open open tour, open I, studio I, tour. I had the, um, the pleasure of being able to see that, that. I think I went to the opening. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. There was a dozen or more mm -hmm. paintings of specific um, pieces. And it was just really, really so, so well done. And it was just great to see everybody celebrating those connections, the mm -hmm. connection between the visual arts and the spoken word and the and the uh, printed page and it just it, it was such a uh, upwelling <laughs> it seemed to yeah. me of creativity and interconnection uh it, it was very moving i found thank you no i i loved it um and i was so proud of um the work that that we and our community partners um did in in, in support of the book um we also had um dancers for example we had a yeah. dia de los muertos event in which uh, we invited ASIC dancers to come and perform mm -hmm. at the Steinbeck Center. We had an ofrenda where people were invited to bring um, different mementos to commemorate their uh, beloved ones who, who passed away. We actually mm -hmm. had um, a, a big photo of Steinbeck there, too, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, which okay. was, yeah, wonderful. And um, so, so we just think that the program is such a great example of um, ways in which we can actively uh, engage people th through a variety of of, um, of artistic ex expressions, and as well as um, you know, p pay um, respects to our own um, namesake authors' uh, creative legacy. That's really amazing. Yeah. I mean, it seems like throughout the year, you have many different ways of connecting people to not just John Steinbeck's work, but his so many of his ideas mm -hmm. that percolate through the work. So when people come, you know, some people are coming from all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. They know the work so well, and they, they come. But some people are just coming because they're coming with a family member, they're mm -hmm. coming with a friend, they're coming for some, some almost random reason. What do you find of, of John Steinbeck's work, and, and you mentioned his values and, and just these ideas that really drove him forward, drove mm -hmm. him to write, drove him to connect, drove him to travel? Mm -hmm. um, what do you find uh, are the most resonant for people who um, may be surprised to find how much they actually like his work? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, his ability to humanize marginalized communities uh -huh. um, still resonates with so many people. Yeah. Um, for, for example, even, even f I mean, when I, when I say that, I think people the first thing that comes to people's mind is The Grapes of Wrath, the, yeah. the book he's best known for. But, um, but even his more lighthearted uh, uh -huh. Novels such as Canary Row, which uh -huh. is you know, more yeah. fun, more yeah. rambunctious, uh, at its core does that humanizes a, a, a group uh, that um, in contemporary society would be seen as buns, homeless people, yeah. right? Um, and it, it, uh, he does such a great job at showing the, the incredible complexity of yes. um, yeah. you know different different um, members of our community, um, and I think that's what. Uh, Resonates with so many different people is that they see themselves in the Jodes and in the you know the Mac and the Boys and Canary Row. That's brilliant. One of the things that that I think about a lot is the ability of the arts. Yeah, you know, think of the visual arts and how um, through the eyes of the visual artist, I see better. You know, I, mm -hmm. I see more detail. I see different perspectives. And so many things I would have overlooked. Mm -hmm. So it occurs to me even just now that mm -hmm. that that. Uh, our writers, creative writers, particularly um, playwrights and whatnot, mm -hmm. are also doing the same thing, helping us to see mm -hmm. people, see, see our neighbors in a different mm -hmm. way. And, and I think that must be why the arts are so good at eliciting empathy. Mm -hmm. We see differently. We see more detail. We see things that um, we, we maybe should have seen before, but now, now we have a much better sense of. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and so that, that's just a really great gift that you bring to the world, that the Steinbeck Center brings to the world, mm -hmm. is this opportunity through your various programs, through the exhibitry, through, uh, and you get out and about from time to time too, mm -hmm. right? Right. How do you, where, when you go out and about, what are you doing? So we do, uh, we're increasingly doing uh, more uh, events out in the community. Mm -hmm. So for example, last year we went to 
um, a lot of events in Salinas, like um, Ciclovia, which is uh -huh. a wonderful event yeah, um, really by fun. building healthier communities, yeah. uh, that w in which they close off Alice L Street, which is a major street in Salinas, um, and open it up to, to physical activity, and it invites yeah. people to reimagine what that street could be. Yeah. Um, and it, um, So we went out last year, actually, in support of the Big Read. Uh, we had a little activity table in which we um, distributed free books and talked to people about the programming for um, that book. Um, we also did uh, um, an event at El Grito. We were actually next to the Arts Council's table <laughs> with Bernice. <laughs> Buddies. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so it's it's really great to be able to go out in the community and, and talk to people because we do have this kind of uh, dichotomy between the fact that um, a lot of the people who visit the museum are from um, other states or even other mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we have that aspect to ourselves, but then we're also you know, a small nonprofit at our core that's looking to service um, a regional um, community mm -hmm. as well. And so it's great to be able to, to um, engage people, um, add activities that they're, they already enjoy and yes. to yeah. get a chance to speak with people about um, the activities that we do and, and how we can better um, service them. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, so uh, we just have a couple more minutes, so let's talk about the next big read and what we can look forward to with all of that. And congratulations also for making that happen. Oh, thank you. So we, we were awarded another grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to um, host a big read, but this time around Citizen American Lyric. And I love this book so much, and I, and I hope that um, as many people in the county read it. Uh, it's a wonderful um, and very thought-provoking reflection on race and the way that it manifests itself in day-to-day -day encounters. So we're hoping to draw f um, some of the, the biggest, uh, oh, these are from the previous Big Read, um, hoping to draw a lot of the activities that we did from, for the previous Big Read and kind of build upon it. So for example, we're going to have, we're, we, we're partnering with essentially every library in Monterey County. That's wonderful. There may be one or two that are not. Is there not 20 in. of them or something? Um, there's there's several branches in in uh, but um, but mostly most I think just about every library system will be participating. Wonderful. So in case you want to, we'll be starting our programs in September and extending through October fifteenth. So the the core idea in the the program is to um, create programs that will engage and, and enhance the reading experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so if you're going to read one book this year, please <laughs> let it be Citizen, and, and you can get it at any one of the, the Monterey County Free Library public uh, branches. You can get it in Salinas at the Heart Now Library, wow. at the um, Salinas Public Libraries, mm -hmm. at the CSUMB Library, and we'll have programming that's throughout amazing. the county. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. And so it, to find out where the programs are going to be and what's going to happen, um, we just go to your website? Yes, Steinbeck.org. Or you can also follow us on Facebook, um, Instagram, or Twitter. We're quite active. Which is more fun. <laughs> which is more fun anyways, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and uh, did you say those events are going to be free? Yes, all, all, all the Big Read um, events are free. So we That's have uh, free film series in the in the fall um, with Maya Cinemas. Uh -huh. um, this is the book Citizen American Lyric, which is just wonderful. Uh, it's um, what I love about it, it. It's not. I mean, it reminds me of Canary Row in the sense that it's so short and uh -huh. packs so much into it. Wow. Um, even though it deals with a very different theme, yeah. but um, but in that way, it reminds me of Steinbeck. All right, Eric. Thank you so, so much for being with us today. Thank this you for is really, me. really great. So, all these segments have been about our shared cultural heritage. We are so, so fortunate in Monterey County. Uh, if you've been here even for just a couple of weeks, you know that there is so much to love about Monterey County. And the, uh, the ability, capacity of our artists and the arts groups to share um, so much of the artistic expression that's come before and to share that with a current generation. It's also that the next generations will be able to, um, to, to really understand more about themselves, about their world, and to, to keep building a, a better world. So we're really delighted that you're with us today. Um, for more on the Arts Council, you can go to arts4mc.org. That's four with the number four. And uh, thanks to everyone at Access Monterey Peninsula for uh, making this program possible, and we'll see you here again next month. Um, see you online, see you around. Thank you very much. <laughs>